Coral reefs are large underwater structures composed of the skeletons of coral, which are marine invertebrate animals. The coral species that build coral reefs are known as hard coral because they extract calcium carbonate from seawater to create a hard, durable exoskeleton that protects their soft, sac-like bodies as well as getting help from millions of tiny polyps. Corals are also home to hundreds of thousands of other species. Coral reefs are the largest living structure on the planet and the only living structure to be visible from space. Coral reefs are found in more than 100 countries around the world. Most reefs are located between the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn, in the Pacific Ocean, the Indian Ocean, the Caribbean Sea, the Red Sea, and the Persian Gulf. Corals are also found further from the equator in places where warm currents flow out of the tropics, such as Florida and southern Japan. Worldwide, coral reefs cover an estimated 110,000 square miles. Coral reefs are important to both marine life and humans. They provide shelter and protection for small fish and also provide food that feed those fish and other marine animals. Furthermore, reefs help feed the fish that we humans live off of and eat. They also protect and create land for us as well. Coral reefs can be found in the tropics and subtropic waters around the world where there is consistent warm temperature provided throughout the year. Scientists have reported that coral reefs must stay in the range of 76 to 84 degrees Fahrenheit. Any hotter will make algae die off, which causes the coral to turn white, also known as coral bleaching. Most reef-building corals also require very salty water, ranging from 32 to 40 parts per thousand. Coral reefs are home to many beautiful and unique sea creatures. Warmer water temperatures can result in coral bleaching. When water is too warm, corals will expel the algae living in their tissues, causing the coral to turn completely white. This is called, or is known as, coral bleaching. When a coral bleaches, it is not dead. Corals can survive a bleaching event, but they are under more stress and subject to mortality. Coral bleaching not only has negative effects on the coral communities themselves, but they also impact fish communities and the human communities that depend on coral reefs and associated fisheries for livelihoods and well-beings. Coral bleaching can have long-term effects on us and the fish communities surrounding it. It can affect our food, our tourism, large shifts in fish communities, cultural values, and they're even used for pharmaceutical use. In 1998, a huge underwater heat wave killed 16% of the coral reefs around the world. Triggered by El Nino that year, it was declared the first major global coral bleaching event. The summer of 1997 was one of the hottest recorded on the reef in the 20th century. Mild bleaching began in late January of 1998 and intensified by February or March. Extensive aerial surveys of 654 reefs conducted by scientists showed that 74% of inshore and 21% of offshore reefs had moderate to high levels of bleaching. Corals are bleaching more and more often around the world because of the warming of ocean waters. A new study shows since bleaching can cause corals to die, this means that coral reefs which provide food and profits for thousands of people will disappearing in the future if we don't change. Researchers analyzed data from about 100 reefs locations from around the world from 1980 to 2016. They found that the rate of bleaching has increased more than fourfold in the f- past four decades, from once every 25 to 30 years in the 1980s to once every six years by 2016. Areas where fishermen can come from all over tend to suffer the most. With water being too warm already by the fishermen catching all the fish, there is no food for the coral. So areas with loose management of fishing, for example, the Solomon Islands and parts of Indonesia tend to see more reef damage than areas with better oversight. Working together, we can help eliminate the contributing factors that cause coral bleaching. Some of the ways we can help protect our reefs are by conserving water, reducing pollution, disposing of trash properly, and volunteering for local reef cleanups. There are some active organizations that are helping and trying to protect the coral reefs, such as Coral Reef Alliance and NOAA. It's not too late to recover our reefs. Even though 90% of the world's reefs may be dead and unable to recover, There's a good amount of reefs that are still able to be saved, but it's up to us.